I'm sitting here on the, uh, I think it's December the 25th. It's a Sunday, it's 7.41 in the morning here. Sitting here in the dining room, drinking water, just took my pills, having a cup of coffee. I wrote in my diary, I'm on, I wrote, just put a page in my 2000, December 2016 diary. I just finished writing on page 1041. And now, this morning I'll be writing on page 1042. So yeah, in the mornings when I get up, usually I have a bowl of oatmeal, make some coffee. Uh, then I check the internet, I look, I, I watch booktube videos in the morning, look at the news, check my email, read some music reviews. So yeah, and then I get my books out, I get a Bible out. This is a Bible I found at a thrift store. Uh, it's a little Bible. I'm always looking for Bibles. This is a new King James Version. That's the version I like the most. So yeah, we're going to, uh, I was going to read this morning, as I mentioned in my To Be Read this weekend, the book of Isaiah, God's Kingdom, A Thematic Theological Approach by Andrew T. Abernathy. Yeah, that's uh, on Isaiah. We all know that when you read the gospel narratives about the birth of Christ, and you go to the Gospel of Luke, and... Uh, And of course, that's he came to. He was born to die on a cross, and but he was the king. He brought in the kingdom. So yeah, yeah. Like it says here in the Gospel of Luke, chapter four. So it came to so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, stood up to read, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, and he reads the Lord reads from the book of Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recover the sight of the blind, and set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant, sat down, and all the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? So he came to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the coming of the kingdom of God. So I was reading that and I got out, like I uh, mentioned in my TBR, I been reading this on the Heidelberg Catechism. This is a new book I got in the mail. It says, The Christian's Only Comfort in Life and Death, an Exposition of the Heidelberg Catechism, Volume 1, by Theodorus Vandergroo, who lived from 1705 until 784. This is just translated out of Dutch. And uh, I, I was... Sometimes I think about things I would like to, in my online diary, Crooked Fingers, I would often take a book like this and, and I quote it, things that stand out in my mind and things that I like, I think is, I just like reading it. And I read this yesterday on Lord's Day uh, 3, Lord's Day 3. Uh, question six, how did God then create man? Did God create man so wicked and perverse? 
Answer, by no means, but God created man good and after his own image and true righteousness and holiness that he might rightly know his creator, hearty love him and live with him eternal happiness to glorify and praise him. Question 7. Whence then proceeds this depravity of human nature? Answer, from the fall and disobedience of our first parents, Adam and Eve, in paradise. Hence our nature has become so corruptible that we are all conceived and born in sin. Question 8. How are we then so corrupt that we are wholly incapable of doing any good and inclining to all wickedness? Answer. Indeed we are except we are regenerated by the Spirit of God. So he uh, He talks about here he says here uh, we need to note that there is a twofold goodness one that is natural and one that is spiritual <clears throat> one natural goodness is something that man can perform in his natural state by virtue of the general influences of God's spirit and providence and the highest level it can it can achieve is but hypocrisy Two, spiritual goodness is the result of the renewing and saving grace of the Holy Spirit. It is the latter, and this, and thus a true and saving goodness, which the instructor has in mind. The Holy Scripture teaches teach this very clearly and abundantly, and we will confirm it by recording a few passages. Paul writes in Romans 5, 6, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. In Romans 8, verse 7, the cardinal, the cardinal mind is enmity against God. <clears throat> In Romans 7:18, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. And in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 5, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything of ourselves, but our physician sufficiency is of God. When we view the matter in a spiritual light, all will become very clear, for the same reason stated earlier. As we have seen, that which is truly good consists entirely in holiness and conformity to God. Since, however, man has deprived himself of God's image by sin, his nature is entirely unholy and ungodly. Consequently, it is impossible for him to love God in his holiness. Instead, he completely hates and opposes them. Man is thus necessarily an enemy to all that is good and a servant of evil. The instructor therefore teaches that man must be regenerate by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God. This doctrine also is founded entirely upon Holy Scripture. In John 3, verse 3, we read that the Savior speaks to Nicodemus, Oh, that this would truly be heard by men, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This means that man cannot be a holy and obedient subject of God. He is incapable of knowing, embracing, serving, and glorifying God as his king. Instead, he continually rebels against God, rejects his government, rids his shoulders of his yoke, and fully cleaves to and serves sin and Satan. This regeneration, however, is nothing less than a complete recreation, renewal, and transformation of man, as well of his disposition, his propensities, his character, and his nature. In their totality, men are set free from the bondage of sin and death and become subject to God and are made subservient to his righteousness. By this regeneration, man, in essence, is converted to God and made entirely a new creature. For if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. 2 Corinthians verse, chapter 5, verse 17. Believers are therefore also referred to as newborn babes. 1 Peter 2, verse 2. And are said to have put on the new man. Colossians 3, verse 10. And to walk in newness of life. Romans 6, verse 4. This regeneration or blessed renewal of man is purely spiritual in nature and has its origin in God. 
It is therefore said of believers that they are born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of God, by the will of man, but of God. John 1 verse 13. The Holy Spirit is the author of this new birth, and the instructor states that it is through him that we are born again. Earlier we considered the words of the Savior who said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In Titus 3 verse 5, the apostle joins these two sayings. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. In this manner, believers are purified from their sins, for it is the Holy Spirit, being the spirit of faith, who leads the elect to Christ. He unites them to Christ and causes them to embrace Receive, unto, un, receive him unto justification and sanctification. In so doing, he renews, sanctifies, and regenerates believers in Christ, causes Christ to dwell in their hearts by faith, and raises them with Christ unto new life. So that's kind of things I read in the morning when you have devotions. I'm reading this, and I'm still reading... Uh, uh, more Reflections on the Book of Job, Volume 3, Books 11 through 16 by Gregory the Great. So here I'm just reading, and like I still got these books out. I'm still reading in the morning for devotions. The Triune God by Fred Sanders, Called by Triune Grace, Divine Rhetoric and Effectual Call by Jonathan Hogman, and Biblical Authority After Babel, Retrieving the Solas and the Spirit of Mere Christianity by Kevin J. Vanderhooser. So those are the books I'm reading this weekend and will be reading throughout January 2017. I don't think there's any Christian books coming out uh, in January. There's some coming out in the spring that I have on pre-order on Amazon. But these should keep me busy for at least another month, maybe two months. So that's what I'm doing here on this morning on December 25th having morning devotions, reading my books, writing in my diary, drinking coffee. And uh, yeah, so I'm hoping you're having a good morning. Uh, from what I remember, this is the day that people celebrate what is called Christmas, which I call Christ Mass. And so uh, I suppose people are, are opening presents today. I don't know what they're doing. But anyway, have a good new week and till next time. Bye.